All right, so that's animation and video games out of the way, but let's get to what I think most people would agree was the main event of D23 this year, and that's the live-action slate. And before we get to the really good stuff, we're going to talk at least briefly about a couple other things. Uh, Disney brought out a number of the cast members, including Ben Kingsley and Lupita Nyong'o for The Jungle Book. That's the upcoming live-action remake from director Jon Favreau. Um, you know, I, I, I'll give this one a shot. Whoa. What was that? Sorry, that was me. I just knocked something on my desk. I'll give it a shot, but, you know, I mean, Disney's done a live-action uh, Jungle Book before, but that had about as much as in common with the real Jungle Book story as the uh, 2000 Godzilla had with the, you know, I mean, it wasn't very, it wasn't a bad movie necessarily, but it had nothing really to do with Jungle Book outside of a couple names, really. So I, this is supposed to be a much more true take, maybe even more true than the animated film, which took a lot of liberties too, but we will also get some aspects of that. Apparently people got to see footage of um, Bill Murray, who's going to be Baloo, singing Bare Necessities. Uh, they showed a poster. It looks interesting. It, they're doing really pushing the motion capture. This is either going to be amazing or it's going to be something hideous like, um, remember the Christmas Carol from a couple years ago? The Zemeckis you know, where the, where the capture just was like a disaster. I mean, I look at this poster, and I think either people are going to embrace this, or they're going to run away screaming. I don't think there's a middle ground. Yeah, I can totally hear that. Any other thoughts? Um, not really, honestly. Okay. Uh, next up, they talked a bit about Alice Through the Looking Glass. That's the sequel to the 2010 Tim Burton. They revealed that Sasha Baron Cohen will be playing a new character called Time, and meanwhile, everybody else in the original will be returning. Johnny Depp, Mia Wieckowski... Uh, Hello and Bonna Carter and Halfway, all of them. Now, the interesting thing is this will be directed by not by Tim Burton, but by James Bobbin, who did The Muppets. And, okay, I'm going to admit it. I actually liked Alice in Wonderland. I didn't think it was great. It wasn't my favorite movie, but I didn't think, I mean, I they were, you know, I, yeah, the ending was a little crap. And, yeah, we had a bit of the old prophecy thing. And I could have done without that. But I actually kind of liked Depp's performance as the Mad Hatter, I liked the other actors, and I loved the visuals, I just, I thought it had its moments, even if it was a bit of Burton going through the motions, at least they were pretty motions, but taking this cast and this version of Alice in Wonderland, handing it over to a director who's shown he can handle whimsy very well, that's intriguing to me, I don't know, maybe, maybe he can bring back, you know, maybe he can bring redemption to a movie that a lot of people hate, do you have any thoughts on Alice Through the Looking Glass? Um, no, um, I mean, like, I'm, I quite enjoyed the, uh, the, the Tim Burton version. I'm interested to see how a very Tim Burton-y movie becomes, uh, not Tim Burton-y, I guess. Yeah. I mean, the last time somebody directed a sequel to a Tim Burton movie, it didn't go so well. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. No, I, I'm sure I don't. Neither, 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 neither does Doug. Yeah, no, no. At credit card. Oh, oh, there he goes. I can hear him yelling. Like clockwork, that man. Okay, moving on. They showed some footage from um, Pete's Dragon remake starring Bryce Dallas Howard. Oh, am I... Look, I... You want to talk about movies that I loved growing up as a kid. Pete's Dragon. Oh, Pete's Dragon was my film. You know what I mean? I, 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 I have such a passion and a fondness for the original Pete's Dragon, but I, I heard good things from this. I heard people said, I mean, this was very initial teaser footage. They didn't even show, you know, the dragon. <laughs> they didn't show Elliot. So I don't know. I like Bryce Dice Howard. This is one of those things. Did we really need a remake? But does that ever stop them? Uh, then we they talked about Queen of Kawadi, which is um, also brought back out. Uh, Jungle Book and Star Wars is... Uh, I'm trying to say her name right this time. Okay, okay. Lupita Nyong'o. I'm, I'm really sorry if I'm butchering that, but it's basically, it's a live-action film um, about about a woman in, in, from, I believe, Nigeria and the effects she had on history. And then they showed some stuff from the live-action Beauty and the Beast, which, why does this thing exist? I mean, no, I get to make money, but at least the other live-action remakes have had some sort of hook, have had some sort of twist. I mean, you know, that didn't mean they were necessarily good. I'm looking at you, Maleficent, but... I mean, I liked Cinderella. I, I kind of... I did like Cinderella 
for eye candy, but it was just, I mean, and this is even, I mean, but at least that Cinderella wasn't just a straight copy of the animated one. This is all the music from the animated film. Yes, there will be a couple new songs, but it's also all the songs from the original, and they're, I mean, I don't know why this thing exists. I don't. Do you want to talk a little bit about Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, Petros? Uh, yeah, I would. I mean, uh, are you going to talk about it at all, or? What? Uh, yeah, I, yeah I, I, I'd love to, actually, because I'm, I'm quite excited about this, honestly. Petrus, you're, like, breaking up and all sort of staticky. Um, that's weird. Any be- okay, there you go. There you go. You're, you're back to normal. All right, I just closed Chrome, basically. Um, man, looking at too much porn. Um, I didn't need to know that. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, um, um, I'm quite excited about uh, Pirates of the Caribbean um, 5, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Dead Men Tell No Tales. That's a bit of a tongue twister when you think about it. Um, focus. focus. Anyway, yeah, focus. Uh, sorry. Um, I'm interested in the fact that Orlando Bloom's coming back. Now, granted, his career's been going absolutely fucking nowhere uh, the last few years since he pretty much stopped doing the Pirates movies. Um, well, you know, I mean, he did. He was involved with The Hobbit quite extensively. Yeah, I, I, I that uh, I don't know. I mean, like, it's, he was kind of in The Hobbit, but I, I like people quite frequently forget that's actually Orlando Bloom as well. Um. <laughs> They think Legolas is real! <laughs> no, You're trying to tell me he's not? Oh, I'm not. No, dear God, I would never dare say that. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be strung up by the fangirls. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm quite excited that he's coming back. Um, no Kira Knight are returning from by the sounds of things. Um, otherwise, they probably would announce, quest- probably would announce guess- together. Well, I guess the real question is, how is he returning? I mean, he's playing his character, but what... There's been a long bit of controversy over the ending of Pirates of the Caribbean 3, where a lot of people, I remember, it was a big deal back when it first came out. You know, people really debated what did the ending mean. Some people thought that the ending meant that, you know, Will was just coming to visit, and others thought that that meant he was going to be free of the curse now, and he was no longer going to be captain of the Ship of the Dead. And, oh, am I spoiling the end of... Too bad! It came out, what, ten years ago? Spoilers are... Anyways. I'm angry. I'm angry this time. I'm, like, feisty. Um, it's all coming out. Uh, like, it, it, it was quite the debate at the time, and like, um, like because it hasn't been because it hasn't been the twelve years as to when that would have been set. I'm almost thinking they're basically setting it in between, uh, uh you know, um, Pirates Three no, and um, the ending. I, I don't know. I mean, what what we know about this film is he'll be in it. I'm kind of hoping he's still captain because I kind of like the idea of him. I mean, I know it's kind of cruel, but I also kind of just I like. The idea of him being on there for, you know what I mean? Being the subor... I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how they use him, that's for sure. And I know a lot of people didn't like Pirates 4. Again, I don't think Pirates 4 was as good as the first three. I still thought it had its moments, though. I, thought, I, I, think, you, I think Pirates 4, you could, like... I, like Unlike Pirates 2 and 3 to a certain extent as well, Pirates 4, a good editor could have cut that down to an hour and 45-minute movie and made it much, much better. Yeah, Whereas, I mean, anytime, there's nothing anytime, you there's, there's nothing you really miss by cutting that movie down. Whereas by cutting down Pirates Three, for example, you li- you miss a lot of like information. Well, as it was, I've always said that Pirates Two and Three. The biggest problem with Pirates Two and Three is they really needed to be their own trilogy. It's like they needed to treat the first Pirates film as the Hobbit, you know, as the standalone prequel, and then they should have done three movies because. Everybody talks about how overstuffed the third film is. They're right. It is overstuffed. With a third movie, you could have had more time to establish the villain, you know, the the, the, the guy, the, the admiral, whatever, the head of the Indian company or whatever. I mean, you could have had more time. You could have given the Kraken a proper death instead of just killing him off screen. I mean, the biggest problem with Pirates 2 and 3 is that they should have been three films, not two. But anyways. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I could, I, I like, there a lot of trilogy movies where, where they doubled up on the last awesome movies. You could say that about, like, for example, I, I think The Dark Knight Rises and The Dark Knight could have been like that as well. Maybe. But anyways, I, 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 I look, I didn't hate Pirates 4, and any time you had Jeffrey Rush and, and Johnny Depp together, it was great. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And I I, I thought I thought the new cast members I, I, like, were quite good. I quite liked Penelope Cruz in that role. Um, yeah, the big problem was the whole pointless bit with the Will Turner stand-in and the mermaid. Yeah. Like... They, they serve no purpose. They take away screen. Like you said, you could have cut them completely out of the movie and it would have been better off. 
And also, the ending is something of an anti-climax. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it felt like you cast Ian McShane as Blackbeard and barely oh. used him. It's like, that may be the greatest casting in history, and then yeah. you barely yeah. use him. Well, what's especially frustrating is I've read the book that it's loosely based off of. And I mean, loosely. The book that they basically took and gutted, like... Okay, you know what four kids did to One Piece? Uh, yeah. That's what Disney did to that book, okay? The original book that Pirates 4 is based off of is brilliant, okay? And if you ever have a chance to read it... And the way they use Blackbeard in it is brilliant. And if they'd used Blackbeard, especially as played by Ian McShane, it would have been amazing. But okay... Let's say the past is the past. They've got two hot up-and-coming directors. They've got apparently an interesting idea. They've promised to cut away the fat. Let's give it one more shot, you know? If it's bad, oh well, the world won't end. Oh well, it'll still make Disney close to a billion dollars. We'll see. You never know. All right, moving on. Let's get to the main event. This is it. This is what you've all been waiting, probably impatiently, for us to talk about. Yes, it is time to... Hey, look, what's that? Oh, that's it. Okay, okay, I'll stop. Let's talk about Marvel and Star Wars. Petros, talk about Marvel. Oh, boy. Uh, okay, so, um, Avengers 2.5, a.k.a. Captain hey, America. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't do that. People have been saying that you're going to, people are, people, are, I've already heard a lot of people saying that people who are making that crack are going to eat their tongue when they see the actual film because they're saying it is definitely a Captain America film. Oh no, I, I don't doubt I don't doubt that it is, but like it's it's Avengers two point five in like that's why it's the point five and not Avengers three. Um, I I think it's I uh, I don't think that in a bad way. I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a great film, and I think that Captain America Civil War um, same directors as um, um, as the uh, as Winter Soldier um, who are gonna go on to uh, direct the actual Avengers three. Um, and I think I, I'm quite excited that that uh, we're finally going to get our Spidey cameo and everything, which we didn't see in the in the in the footage or anything, but we did see a lot of uh, um, in the descriptions at least. We uh, we heard about uh, yeah. Can some... I just just say it's amazing that this footage hasn't leaked online yet. Yeah, I've searched everywhere for that thing. I I just saw somebody on Twitter. Hold on, I want to give him I want to give him proper credit. Um, um, uh, Bob Chipman, the movie Bob. Incre just tweeted uh, as we're recording this. Incredible me that Civil War footage hasn't leaked yet. And Disney should handle government secrets, and he ain't wrong. True, they, they, they probably learned their lesson from the uh, from the whole Avengers trailer uh, leak uh, a while back. Um, but tr truth be told, the um, I'm I'm quite uh, imp I'm quite impressed with the uh, um, with, with the way uh, Captain America is being like being set up and. I think it's a, I think it's a good trial run for the event for, for like them doing the Avengers. I mean, like when when it was announced that Joss Whedon was not going to continue doing the Avengers movies and that it'll be um, it'll be somebody else taking over, I was a little bit nervous, especially because regardless of, regardless of the fact that they made one really good movie, they didn't necessarily make like the like I'll be honest, like it's got that like Winter Soldier has got some flaws, and these two can't take all the credit for what made that movie great. I'll be honest. Like part of what made that movie great was the action, and that goes down to the second unit director, not to them. Um, so yeah, they did. Damn it. I mean, uh, yeah, there's something. I mean, look, I'm I'm excited for it. I'm happy just that Paul Rudd's Ant Man. I mean, like they described the scene where he's getting introduced to Cap, and he's like, he keeps shaking his head. He goes, "Oh God, I'm shaking your head too long, but I can't stop." I mean, I loved Ant Man. I just thought it was a lot of fun, and I really liked the idea of bringing that character into this. I think he's going to really inject some 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 great humor. And I, I like the setup, and I like the way things are coming down. I'm already looking forward. Yeah, I, I, I'm real excited. But to me, the real thing of Marvel news at the show was 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 Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is one of my favorite Marvel characters. Eventually, when I get around to my top ten Doc Marvel characters, he's definitely going to be on the list, and he's going to be up high. I'll just go ahead and tell you that. I love the character. Um, and we finally got to see a bunch of artwork of it. They haven't even started shooting yet, but what we got to see in terms of concept art, it looks like they're nailing it. I know there's the controversy around what they're doing with the Ancient One, and I'm kind of of two minds. I agree, I don't like whitewashing, but on the other hand, I love Tilda Swinton. I think Tilda Swinton makes everything better. I don't think there's a movie that doesn't benefit. I mean, I like Constantine, and a big reason I actually like the Constantine film is because of Tilda Swinton. 
she's that fucking good. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited for Doctor Strange. I like the description, uh, you know, like Inception meets the Marvel Universe via by way of magic. Sure, why not? That sounds fun to me. Any thoughts on Doc Strange? Um, well, I, I, I love Cumberbatch. Um, I, I'm a Cumberbatch. Um, so, um, I, I'm, I'm excited to see him into the Marvel Universe. I mean, I'm more excited about Captain America because, generally speaking, I've been more, I, I really, I really love, like, uh, Cap as a character, and I, I'm... Your, your, your home country is, is crying for you right now, Petrus. What can I say? Um... Uh, I've spent too long here, apparently. Um, spent too long in America. America. Um, I, I like Captain America, and uh, I think Captain America Civil War uh, is... Please stop that. No, I, I regret starting this. Please stop it. <laughs> I think it could be... A real no, no, no seriously. It it's, like a, it's, like a little, it's like a little pinprick into my soul that I will I'll, never I'll get stop. back. I'll stop. I'll stop. Yeah, yeah, please. Please stop. Um, please. I think it's going to be a really great movie. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm looking forward to the fact that They've really set up the teams along a, along an interesting line, and yeah. um, like I, my only concern with the movie, and it's it it was inherent to the source material, is that the last movie was Cap on the Run. This movie is Cap on the Run. Yeah, I guess I kind of see what you're saying, but I mean, Cap on the Run was really a very small part of the last movie. Well, it I was mean, pretty not, much the entire I, movie. Let's be honest. But it but not in the same way. It was like it was Cap. I mean, there was no question that Cap was on the right side. And there was, no, and it was like Cap's allies. You know, it's like all the good guys were still with Cap. You know what I mean? Yeah. I do. This think, I do think this movie will be infinitely better than the source material. The source material does a real butch. Well, that would be hard. Well, like the source material had a great idea behind it, and like there's a definite good, there's a definite rationale behind behind like Iron Man's like we need to be held I, accountable I, sort of thing. And from what I, I think I, this one, sorry, I think this one's gonna hurt because like they've already talked about how like how a uh, surprisingly Widow's gonna be on Iron Man's side. And, and between this, between the Avengers, Age of Ultron, and Winter Soldier, you know, the, the, the Cap-Widow relationship has really developed into this strong friendship. And her going up against Hawk, I, I, I think they're going to make it hurt some. You know what I mean? I don't, I mean, and if anything, like the biggest failing is that in, in the, the biggest failing out of the many, many failings of the original comic, beyond the fact that it was written by Mark Millar, who is a fucking hack. Yeah, he's a hack. Anything good that's come from him, the majority that's good from him has actually come from other people. Like, I liked the first Kick-Ass film, but that's because they changed things. Mark Miller's a hack. Anyways, you can send all your... What's your email address again, Petrus? <laughs> oh, I just want to know, uh, for no real reason. For no real reason. Uh, my, my, uh, my email address is... Um, um, now nah, you ruined the bit. You ruined everything. Uh, Anyways. You just had to come up with a fake email address. God, how hard was that? Anyways. Batman at Wayne Enterprises.com. Um, the big problem was is that Iron Man came off as a... I mean, who really sided with Iron Man in the original Civil War comic? I mean, really, because he was written so... I mean, you know. He creates a fucking... In the comic, he creates a, a, a cyborg clone of Thor who at the time in the comics was dead. A cyborg clone of Thor who then goes on to kill a superhero. Well, let's, yeah. let's, let's not just point this out. The, the, uh, the, the best thing that DC have done for Marvel is shown that superheroes need to be held fucking accountable sometimes with Man yeah. of Steel. It, I, 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 I think Civil War is going to be good. I think it's going to be a really great launching point for Phase 3. I'm excited for it, but to me, it's also going to be a proven commodity. I mean, you know, you got that cast. You, every, I, I, I know people talk about how it's too overstuffed, but to me, I think that's a feature, not a bug. This finally feels like we got a universe. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I mean, like, like they'll probably have like mini cameos in there for like. There's always cameos in Mar like, like they've, these are the just the cast that's been announced. I, I think Daredevil was going to appear in it somewhere. I wouldn't be surprised to be done. Maybe, I don't know. But anyways. Uh, it's Doctor Strange is the bigger risk, and that's and I I, I think it's, there's a lot of unknowns, including the director. But I feel like what I saw of the concept art and what they were saying, I feel like they're off to the right start. So, all right, that's Marvel. And now, last the big one, absolutely not least, Star Wars. Da 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 da. You're not singing along. Why are you not da, 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 da. 
No, no, uh, it's too uh, late. As always, the moment is passed. So, yeah, considering they didn't actually show a trailer, oh my fucking god, did a lot of Star Wars stuff come out of this. Ah, uh, where to begin? Okay, I think I where to begin is, I think, the most controversial bit of Star Wars news. We got the director for Episode Nine, Jurassic World's Colin Trevorrow. And to say that people had mixed feelings about this would be a vast understatement. I have some pretty strong opinions about this, but but let me let you start out, Petros. Well, what do you think of Trevorrow being on Star Wars Episode Nine? I am one of the only people on the planet who has yet to see Jurassic World, so I can't really comment on his actual direct, uh, directing ability. But from what everyone tells me about it, this can't be really a good thing. Like, come, like, like it's objection. It's kind of, it's kind of like, from what I understand, his. I said objection. It really depends on what his script is like. Look, look, Phoenix. Um, it really comes down to this. It depends on what the script is like, and if he puts the time and effort into making this the way it should be, and how much creative control he really has over it. Because okay. Question one: Have you seen Safety Not Guaranteed? No, I haven't. Okay, that was his first movie. Well, he done some other, but that was. I feel like Trevor's getting something of a bad rap. Now, did I like Jurassic World? No, I was fairly mad on it. I thought it was fairly mediocre and average. Mediocre. But okay, you know what? Compared to what two other films we've got this summer, I'll take it. I, I mean, it could have been so much worse. Hi, Terminator Genesis. Hi, Fantastic Four. I mean, unlike the directors of those debacles, at least Trevor proved he could make the jump credibly from a indie small indie film to a large film and not completely self implode. So he's got that going for him. Yeah, and uh, I mean, um... and second of all, oh, hold on, there are problems with Jurassic World. But the director isn't really one of them. No, there's nothing too fancy. It's it's fairly straightforward meat and potatoes directing for a lot of it. But again, I mean, let me ask you a question, Petros. Can you name without looking it up the director of Return of the Jedi? Oh, uh, crap. Um, you can't, can you? I have been cautioned. Who the fuck directed uh, Return of the Jedi? You can't remember. No, I can't, honestly. Did, before I go any further, did you like Return of the Jedi? Yes, I did. Okay, it was directed by Richard Marquand. He was, before Return of the Jedi, he was probably best known for the 1981 drama Eye of the Needle... And the 1985, well, no, that was after, the 19, yeah, the 1981 film, Eye of the Needle, which is this kind of small, sardonic, British spy film, kind of nasty, very dark film. You know what I mean? Basically, sort of noir set during World War II. Everything else he did was, was mostly music-related. Like, he did Hearts on Fire, which was a, a documentary about Bob Dylan and, 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 and Fiona Rupert, and, and he did, you know, the, a film... Well, the birth the theme songs of Rocky he, he did, he did. Basically, he, he, Star Wars Return of the Jedi was unlike anything. He, sadly, he died in, in 1987 at the age of 49. So, a couple days short of his 50th birthday. Uh, his last film w was released, actually, Hearts of Fire was released posthumously. Post, ah, wow, I butchered that one. But the point is, he, he was active as a director from the 70s up until he died. He never made anything else like Return of the Jedi. Nobody could really name him. He's not really a big name director, but it, I love Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi is probably my favorite of the original trilogy. I know, I know. I res I, I probably respect Empire more. I think Empire is probably the better movie. Okay, so before you jump all over me, but as a kid, I loved Return of the Jedi even more than I loved Empire because it actually had the awesome sword fights and it had. I, I was okay with the Ewoks. I didn't hate them. I didn't love them. I loved the whole Jabba's Palace, all of that. So, the point is, now people said that he basic that Luke is basically ghost directed, and maybe that's true, maybe it's not. But the point is, there's a difference between a director in something like a small project and the director of a big, massive film that's part of a larger machine, especially a director that's the third in a series of films where the style has long since been established and all that. And I think at this point. The uh, the LucasArts brain trust has proven that first of all they're willing to drop a director because I don't I don't believe for a moment Trank left willingly okay 
Maybe, maybe. Oh, but they still didn't. Even if he did, they didn't have to let him go. They could have forced him. You know what I mean? But they were either way. It was clear this wasn't going to probably be a good match. So I really think that people need to calm down. I don't think Jurassic World was badly directed. It wasn't well written. And I know Trevor was one of the writers on it, but he, that's, the key word is one of. There were five writers on that film. And we don't. And, and Jurassic World Four, Jurassic Park Four, had been in development for a long time. If you ever want to read something amazing? Go read the original like pitch for Jurassic World Four. You have no idea how insane this film was. Okay, but anyways, are talking like rap cyborg raptors who could talk? No, really. Go look it up. Anyways, okay. I like think... I'll, 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 put, I'll put it this way. I mean, like he may not like. The, uh, as an example, we had before we had um, Fantastic Four. The guy who directed that, uh, Josh Trank, directed Chronicle. Before that, was a really, really fucking good movie, Chronicle. Um, Fantastic Four. I have not seen it, and I refuse to see it. That's smart. Go with that feeling. Yeah. Yep. Look, my, I guess my point is, is that it's 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 also the fact that. This thing ain't coming out till 2019. Trevorrow has two more films lined up before he even gets to this. And to his credit, they're both smaller indie sci-fi projects. Projects that, again, and his first film, Safety Not Guaranteed, is a small sci-fi film starring Audrey Pladless Plaza, which I absolutely love. It's about a woman who answers this thing in a, you know, she works at a, at a magazine. And she's like the new, you know, the new kid on the block. And, and she's... She's basically uh, looking for anything to make an impression. She sees a want ad, you know, saying, assistant needed, safety not guaranteed. It turns out it's a guy who claims he's invented a time machine. And she gets caught up with this whole guy. And it's a really great kind of brilliant, uh, uh, a small indie film with a, with a really, just a perfect ending. It ends absolutely perfectly. And it's really well directed. And Trevor wrote it and directed it. And it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And so... Look, when you make the jump, that was his first film. His next film was Jurassic World. And I don't know how much input he had in that. I actually think studio input had probably a lot more power on it than he did. The thing is, when you jump to your first big budget film, there's something of a learning curve. By the time he gets around to making episode nine, he'll have made two more, he'll have made four films. And hopefully by then he'll have ironed out some of the kinks. And at worst, I still think we'll probably get a decent film that fits in with the first two. That's just my take on it. Because remember, he's not coming into episode seven. If he was doing episode seven, I'd be a lot more concerned. But Abrams and and, and um and Ryan are both are doing they're they're doing the first two and they're really setting the tone. And it's very clear when you make the third in a trilogy like this, you basically have to you have to follow along in the standard they set. You really do. This isn't like the all you know. So, all right. Any other thoughts about Trevor? Um, not really. No, I think I think you pretty much summed it up, honestly. Okay. Uh, let's take a break from the movies and talk about Star Wars Land. I know you're a big theme park guy, right? Um, uh, well, yes, but I'm not a big roller coaster guy, funnily enough. Okay, but that's good, because this isn't about roller coasters. This is about a land, not a roller coaster. Yes, Come but on, it's going to have lots on... of roller coasters in it. But the point no, is... It's not, not going to have any roller coasters. They don't have roller coasters. They Look, it's coasters. a land. Stay on target, Petros. Stay on target! Yeah, yeah, I'm just using the force. Um, are, are you are you as incredibly mind blowingly excited for Star Wars Land as I am? The only thing that could make my life better is if they announced is if like they announced that they were like building a life size replica of the USS Enterprise for, from Star Trek as well. Honestly, and they could like, go into space. Yeah, pretty much like that. That that. Do you know they actually? Do you know they actually almost did that? Yeah, I know. I I can't believe they didn't. I'm I'm really disappointed. I, I, the, I wonder if Into Darkness, if Into Darkness had made like seven hundred million, if they'd gone ahead with that. Okay, have you seen the production art for Star Wars Land? Yes, it looks freaking awesome. Like, I was down at, uh, in Anaheim by Disneyland for VidCon recently, and mm-hmm. um, my girlfriend and I noticed uh, there was a whole bunch of land opened up, and that um, we had rumors that Disney had bought it. Didn't know why. We we assumed. They were extending it probably for some kind of like new rides, extension of California Adventure Park, or something like that. Turns out we figured out why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, they've said that this is going to be their largest single-themed land expansion ever. It's going to be happening in both Florida and California, proving Disney's no fool. 
Um, and they've said that the big thing about this will be a massive scale and everything will be in character. So, you know, all the stores, all the shops, all the restaurants, you're, everybody will be in costume. Everybody, will, nobody will be breaking character. This is like they're going for like as authentic of a Star Wars experience as they can get. Yeah. What is it you want to see more than anything? Then they've announced two rides, okay? The first will be probably a, a, a ride where you're basically somehow po probably similar to Star Tours, but probably more interactive where you're you're going to be piloting the I – mean, the, first of all, before we go any further, they will be, this is going to be set in a new planet, which looks a lot like Naboo, but they said it's a new planet specifically being made for this ride, so for this land. So this land will be a new planet in the Star Wars universe, and it will incorporate elements from – all the whole franchise so you'll get prequel elements yes it, they existed deal with it fanboys the prequels existed move on with your lives this so, so the clone wars uh the prequels the original trilogy and the force awakens and indeed one of the rides will be your pot during your piloting the uh millennium falcon on an important mission the other ride will feature uh uh, uh you getting caught in the middle between a climactic battle between the first order and the resistance which are the two new organizations in the force awakens so and there will be of course a cantina that will look suspiciously similar to a certain Mars eisley watering hole so what but more so that's what they're gonna have but is there anything else you absolutely have to see in star wars land no yeah, man i can't even like I, I i can't even begin to imagine what it's going to be like i mean um, unfortunately a lot of our perception of uh like star wars uh Yeah, I, 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 I can't wait. I, I think I think this is really good, like really going to open up Star Wars to the general public in a way that like the universe never been opened up to the public before. Like, mm -hmm. um, like I, I personally don't know much about the expanded universe, uh, which I guess has been erased now. But I'm sure they'll take some influence from it here and there. Um, and uh, a lot of it, I'm sure, is going to come from the new movie. Some of it's going to come from the prequels and stuff like that. Um, like, like I'm, I, I'm, I'm interested just to see what a Star Wars world is like. Um, like, like this is like, this is like Epcot on steroids almost. Yeah, I mean, they've said the whole point is, I mean, so presumably, I mean, like a big thing that Disney's done in recent years have been like, uh, you know, animatronics that can walk around with either like, a, you know, on their own or with like somebody nearby, you know, out of sight controlling it so it looks like they're on their own. And it's hard not to see how that technology could be incorporated with droids. I mean... This is, I mean, if they're really going to try to keep everybody in costume and if they're going to have things like, you know, I, I don't know, I assume Bothans and, uh, you know, Calamari and uh, Mon Cowardly. Not, uh, All the Ewoks and, and Wookiees walking around. You know we're going to get a Gungan. I'm sorry, we're going to get a Gungan. You know we're going to get a that Gungan. That poor guy, whoever wears that Gungan costume, is going to get the shit kicked out of them. God, I hope they like they need to have like storm like the the bit better be stormtroopers are escorting him along because that's the only way he'll be safe. Yeah, I mean, you, you see the pictures, and of course, you know, there's nothing more deceptive and lying that I there is. I, I'm a big theme park fanatic too, and there's nothing more wonderful than the theme park production art because never in a million years will the things actually resemble what you're seeing. I mean, they're showing building like they're showing out like a city with multi-story, multiple multi-story buildings. If they can actually f pull that off, wow. And maybe they can, I mean, let's have be you honest, if there is anyone who can pull it off, it's Disney. True. And each of these lands will be getting 14 acres. Yeah. And, and right now only two announced rides. So, I mean, they're going to have a lot of real estate to play with. I mean, I, I would I mean, imagine, like, if we could actually get, like, these tall kind of, like, tree buildings built into the rocks, and if we, I imagine we get some of those Naboo-style waterfalls. I mean, this could be ridiculously, luxuriously, you know, indulgent, but, God, it would be worth it just to see it once. Have you been to the Harry Potter one? I, I've not, actually. Like, that, uh, that's what, actually, my girlfriend and I were discussing, is that they're, they're doing this, essentially, to compete with, uh, with Harry Potter. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, at Universal, and there is actually, and there's going to be uh, uh, Nintendo rides soon at Disney. At, uh, sorry, not Disney. It's uh, at Universal as well. So that's another thing that's sort of like, for sure. Uh, well, you know, it's worth noting that um, Disney is uh, this land's a long way off, but uh, Disney is updated going to be updating Star Tours. They'll be now. Right now, there's like three different storylines or three different routes in st in the new Star Tours. Okay, so you can see three different like you know you'll see go to different places and things like that, and they're going to. Like, so you get something that's, you get one that's, like, very reminiscent 
of the classic trilogy, you get one that's reminiscent of the prequels, right down to the pod racing, and then you get one that's just kind of generic space stuff, and they're going to be adding a fourth route, which will obviously be based on the new movie, and they're doing an Iron Man ride in Hong Kong that's going to be like kind of like a mix of Star Tours and the um, Toy Story one where you're shooting things. I imagine that one will come to the other parks sooner rather than later. I don't know. It's maybe a rights issue, but I mean, this is a long way off in the future. They haven't, you know, they haven't even broken ground yet, but I don't know. Do you have, a, would this get you to get a lifetime, like a year membership to, uh, to Disney? I've, I've had a, yeah, I've had a, I've had a, I've had two year long passes in the past and I, I'm happy to get it again after with this. Uh, I hate so much. I hate you. Ca- you don't go. It's, 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 it's really cheap for California as well, to be fair. Um, You're a bastard. I just hate you. Um, I, I think that, um, um, I think this is gonna be this is gonna be really cool. I mean, like I said, the only the, the only thing that could compete with this in my mind really is like if they if they built up. Actually, there is something better than life size Enterprise. They could reboot. They could build Deep Space Nine. Uh, but that's about ha. it. <laughs> yeah. And you're in my dreams. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't want to be a negative Nancy. I'm very excited for this, but I would caution people. I uh, if you read any history of theme parks in general, Disney in particular, these things always start out with a lot of ambition, but they also cost so much money. I mean, they'd be fools to cut back on Star Wars, but they've been fools before in the past. I mean, different people were running the company then, but these things tend to be cyclical. So, I don't know. I'm excited. At the very least, I expect something great, and I can't imagine they don't produce it. All right. uh, Before we get... All right. Let's wrap things up with two images that spoke... Which were real proof that images can speak louder than words... Let's start with the less spoilery one, uh, the Rogue One picture. What we got, we got to see what was basically a cast shot, not the full cast, but we got to see for the first real image from Star Wars Rogue One, which is the first of the Star Wars stories. Yeah, they apparently have ditched the anthology title now. The title is Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Really? I didn't realize they changed the title. Yeah, guys, can we pick something and stick with it? Jesus Christ. This is the third such change in, like, so many... I mean, I thought... In, I don't know. I guess maybe somebody in marketing didn't like using anthology. They probably thought, Duh! The people are too stupid to understand anthology. I think people know what anthologies are. But okay, fine. A Star Wars story. I thought a Star Wars anthology was actually cooler, personally. But fine. So, have you seen the group... Did you see the group shot, I assume? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's a uh, very different tone to Star Wars, and I quite like that because this is a very different tone of movie. Yeah, uh, it looks it looks really great, though it also looks dark and grimy. I mean, it looks like something out of Firefly, which, speaking of which, see what I did there? They confirmed that Alan Tudyk will be joining the cast of Rogue One, though he will be playing a motion-captured character, either a droid or an alien or something, and to be fair, he's done really good in the past. Like, uh, to me, one of the more underrated films that he's done, uh, uh, iRobot, which, look, I, one of the first books, I, I'm a huge Isaac Asimov fan, and no, iRobot is not... I like iRobot, I'll talk about it another day. Anyways, he's really good in it. I, I know we all want to see Alan Tudyk in person in Star Wars just because our little geek heads would go crazy, but he's in it, and that's enough. Uh, I think this image looks gorgeous. And I do like that there's a good amount of diversity, though I'm not entirely thrilled that there's only one female character in this image. Hopefully she's not going to be the only major female character in the film. Because that'd be unfortunate. Anything else about Rogue One? Um, nothing in particular right now. I mean, like, it's... I think it's going to be... It's, it's going to be interesting to explore, like... If done right, this could be Star Wars' Deep Space Nine, basically. Like, something that takes it into a completely different area that's never really been done before. Mm-hmm. Well, it's got yeah. I mean, it's the first non-saga Star Wars film. Well, unless you count Clone Wars, and we don't count Clone Wars. Sorry, I love Clone Wars the cartoon, but even even the people who made the Clone Wars cartoon will tell you the movie was a god awful mess. Even George Lucas didn't didn't want to direct that. We'll put it that way. No, I mean that, who cares? George Lucas has no good opinions anymore. I mean he's proven himself in that, but no, I mean anyways, it's the first real non-Star Wars saga film, and it's got a lot to live up to. And then we got the poster. Oh, yeah. The poster. We got a new poster from Force Awakens, painted by the man, the myth himself, Drew Struzan. And if you don't know that name, for shame. 
He's the guy who's done all, the, you know, those gorgeous <clears throat> original trilogy posters you love? You know, those painted ones? Wow, I'm starting to lose my voice. He did those. And he did a new one, and oh, was this interesting. Because not only was it gorgeous, the big thing is, to nobody's surprise, John Boyega's Finn has got a lightsaber. What'd you think of this poster? I honestly thought it was going to be, um, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the the female protagonist in this. Um, I still, oh yeah, she's that staff. You notice how she keeps conspicuously holding a staff? Yeah, I thought she was going to be the Jedi in this. Honestly, uh, I think she's probably going to be a Jedi. I think she will be as well. I think they're playing. I mean, the fact that she has that staff, I think somebody's got a double bladed lightsaber. We'll see. Saying. We'll see. I mean, like the fact that, that like and, until now we've seen nothing of him of like uh, of John um, last name I Boyega. can't pronounce Boyega. Uh, his, um, we've, we've never, seen, we've never seen anything about him fellow. being a Jedi of any kind, or even holding a lightsaber of any kind. So, it's interesting yeah. to see him holding it in this poster, and that's basically how they reveal that he's going to have, he's going to be force sensitive, at least. Although a lot of people had suspected he was going to be, or at least hoped he would be it. I mean, it's a big deal. We have a female character front and center, we have, you know, we have a black man, you know, who's going to be a Jedi. I mean, yes, Mace Windu, but he's going to be a main character. We also have old Han it's Solo. going to be a Jedi who you don't expect to say motherfucker every ten seconds. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just basically, I just, I want this fucking movie now. I want it now. Seriously, four I would months, murder... Dude, four months. I would murder you to get to see it early. Okay, I'd, I would. I'd murder you just for fun of it. That hurts. You wouldn't at least try and get something for it? Come on, I thought we were friends. All right, all right. Well, I'll, 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 you could have murdered me. At least get something for it. I'll come back to you with some, with, with, with some suggestions of what I can murder you for, okay? How about that? Thank you. I appreciate that. It's about respect. You know? <sighs> we can't end on that note. All right, any any <laughs> final thoughts about D23? Please, Petros, anything so we don't go out on that note. Um, I'm, I'm like, I'm quite excited about uh, the thing that excited me most is uh, is the Star Wars land for Disney for Disneyland. I really like. Um, did, over the last few years, like I've lived I've lived in LA for four years now, and Disney World gets all the cool stuff, and everyone goes on about Disney World, Disney World, Disney World. Disneyland was pre- the original. I've like, always preferred Disneyland. And, well, I've not been to Disney World yet, despite the fact that I've been to Florida three times now. Um, I like California Adventure. It's turned into a nice little place. Yeah, I, I, I've only been to California Adventure itself once um, in the time that I've been there. Every time I've had to go to Disneyland, something comes up. Like, I cracked my ribs one time, and I still went to Disneyland and went on roller coasters. It was not as fun as I hoped. Um, but I'm really excited about Star Wars Land, and I think that's going to be really cool, because I, I can't wait for the experience of it all. And Yeah. I hope that doing stuff like this actually inspires more genre. Uh, this and Harry Potter inspire more genre um, lands, basically, yeah. in the future. Do you, do you think, do, I have a thought that Disney may not even have to hire people, because I think that Star Wars Land will be such a cosplayer's dream. Maybe all they'll have to do is just say, okay, cosplayers get into Star Wars Land free, and they'll never run out of populated people in authentic-looking costumes. I, I, like, I can probably guarantee that, yeah. Like, I mean, I like if, especially if they say like like it, like imagine it like, Wars- like imagine imagine they just say when Anime Expo is happening in LA, every cosplayer gets into uh, gets into Star every Wars Star Land Wars. free. Every Star Wars cosplayer. Yeah, gets. every Star Wars cosplayer gets into Disneyland. We, we, we gotta have authenticity. We can't have a fucking Vulcan walking around Star Wars Land that would break that would break the immersion. No, you can't do that. They don't True. mix. Plus, most of them are dead now anyway. Star Trek can cross over with Green Lantern and Planet of the Apes, but it can't cross over with Star Wars. No, really. Star Wars is currently in the middle of a comic book crossover. Star Trek, I mean, Star Trek. Star Trek is in the middle of a crossover right now with Green Lantern Corps. They had a crossover earlier with uh, Planet of the Apes, the Charlton Heston version, meeting the um, William Shatner version of Kirk. (laughs) They've done Legion of Superheroes. They've done Doctor Who. But they haven't done Star Wars. And you keep going. Dear Disney and IDW, who currently... Ha- and Paramount, do you not like money? 
I mean, you know, you, you, the original, the Star Wars comic relaunch recently and sold like a million issues. Can you imagine how many issues a Star Wars Star Trek comic would sell? Uh, can you, like, I'll put it this way, like, the DC Marvel thing, you know how long that took to get off the ground? Yeah, the but... The people there are good friends. No, they're not. They hate each other. No. I mean, the, well, the, the staff... The staff are okay with each other, but the people in charge despise each other. Well, that's exactly other. the thing. The staff, J.J. Abrams, directed both freaking movies. Right, but I mean, Disney and Star Wars... Disney has no beef with Paramount. They've worked with Paramount before. So, I mean, they, they have a decent relationship. But, okay. I just want to say D23 was awesome. Watching all the videos, watching all the stuff. I'm happy Kingdom Hearts, even if in a limited way, is coming to Disney Infinity 3.0, which I will be reviewing eventually. I... Anyways, depends on how early I get a review copy. Um, I, I, and I also want to say, if anybody was at D23 and got that King Mickey uh, a power disc for Disney Infinity, I, I will trade you my soul. Well, I would trade you my soul for it, but unfortunately, Disney already owns me, and I'm thinking about making it official. I think what I should do is just go ahead and get the mouse ears tattooed on my back. I mean, they already owe me in every other way. They might as well own my body as well. Your body is Take ready. me, Disney. Take me, Disney! I'm yours! Your body is ready? Wrong company. Hey. I don't want to keep fixing them up. They, they feel like they got a lot of similarities. Let's, let's be honest. Sooner or later, Disney will consume all. You assume they haven't already. It's like they could consume everything right now. They just don't want to. It wouldn't be sporting. All so... Right. Uh, that's this objective reporter who just went off for about five minutes on how much he, in, you know, look, I'll still call Disney on this shit. I just thought the, this was another really great weekend from Disney. They, they shown they really know how to do these things, right? Yeah, they've got their smarts. Like, like they're, they're having a real good run right now in terms of, like, having smart people do the right things. And Disney has always yeah. taken their time with things. And that's something a lot of companies could really just fucking learn from. Yeah. And letting the creatives who know what they're doing do what they're doing. I mean, at least that's in more recent years, that's been Disney's MO, and that's the smart way to go, and it produces some pretty amazing results. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode, this massive episode of Unrepented Geeking. I want to thank Petros for joining me, and I want to thank all of you, as always, for watching. Um, right by the time you watch this, I think Blip will probably have closed down or will be about to close down. If it isn't the 21st yet, you absolutely want to go, and if you want to save any of my old stuff, Go on to Blip, download it now. I am right now working on getting everything that's on unrepentedkicking.com uploaded to YouTube and ready by the time of close. But older stuff, it, I'm not going to have everything even remotely uploaded by the time Blip goes away. It just it's taking a long time, and I'm trying to work on certain deals and things like that. And it, it, it's going to hopefully, I will eventually. I have I have everything saved. I will eventually get everything back online that I can. And I certainly hope to have the majority, if not everything, back up. But it could be a couple months before everything is really up and running again. I mean, I hope to eventually get everything uploaded to unrepentedgeeking.com as well. But I mean, it, it just takes time. It takes it just it takes time, and I've got a lot of things going on. So if you want some of my older stuff, head over to Blip now while you can. Download it. Make sure you also, if you want to keep following, you know, there's unrepentedgeeking.com where you can always find my stuff. You can also there find a link to my Patreon. And please, I really need any support you guys can provide. Things are really lean at the moment, so uh, if you could just, even just for a couple months, those who support my way, it would really be helpful and appreciated. Also, you can check me out on Channel Also, but you can find my stuff there. Um, yeah, What's your YouTube from, channel name, dude? Yeah, and my YouTube. Check it out, unrepentedgeeking.com. I also, so you could you could find me on YouTube there, and make sure you subscribe there as well if you want to keep up, because I'm now uploading everything to YouTube until I say otherwise. You can also find Petros' stuff. My life is a video game. Check out his series. It's great stuff. If you if you have a fondness for the things of such as Captain N and um, what was that other one? The Power Team or Team Power or whatever. You know the one with Bigfoot and the basketball player and uh, the Conan ripoff. I kind of remember that one. I, I remember it. Anyways, if you like that, you're gonna love this. This is like that, only done intelligently with actual talent. <laughs> And with Brenta Floss, I hear you guys tend to like him. So, you know, he's involved heavily. So check out My Life is a Video Game, and of course, check out UnrepentedGeeking.com. For UnrepentedGeeking.com, I'm Sean Cronenfeld, wish saying, may the Force be with you all. Till next time.